Welcome everybody to uh, this afternoon's session of our K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. Today is Blend It with Blackboard, the Make Home 2020 model. And I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Riley McClure. I'm a product marketing manager uh, focusing on teaching and learning here at Blackboard. Uh, and, and I'll be moderating today's session. Uh, with me, I, I also have Jenny Breister, uh, an, another member of our K-12 marketing team. Um, during uh, today's presentation, if, if you have any questions or are have any difficulties with uh, anything related to the session, um, pl please remember uh, to just go ahead and put your questions into the chat, and one of us will, will go ahead and, and answer you there. Um, during today's session, we are going to ask that you hold all of your questions until the end of the, the presentation, at which point uh, we will open the floor uh, for questions. And finally, uh, just a reminder that, that uh, we're, we're going to be uh, getting ready to plan our spring uh, K-12 Innovative Se Teaching Series here pretty soon. Uh, so if you have any ideas uh, for topics for the series or if you'd like to be a, a presenter or there's a, a specific topic that you would like to see us present on, uh, please feel free to reach out to either myself or Jenny. Uh, you can, can contact us via Twitter or via email, and uh, we will go ahead and, and try and incorporate any of your suggestions into our planning. And just as a reminder, uh, all of our, our K-12 uh, Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series sessions are recorded, and we do up Uh, K-12 uh, playlist uh, here you can see on the screen. Uh, you can use the URL on the screen to access that playlist or if you just search for Blackboard on YouTube and go to our YouTube channel uh, you should be able to uh, locate the playlist there. And then uh, you know, new for this fall I uh, wanted to extend an open invitation to anybody uh, joining us uh, to also join our new uh, Blackboard community site. Uh, the community site, uh, it's something new that we, we launched over, over the summer, and uh, uh, specifically as it relates to uh, K-12, we've built this K-12 uh, Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series Professional Learning Community. Uh, it's a place where we can share ideas, uh, you can you know, network with other educators uh, of uh, like minds, and uh, we also make all of our uh, session materials and videos available through the group. Uh, it's free to join. So all you need to do is, is simply go to this link and, uh, and register, and you should get a confirmation email and uh, be able to join from there. And then finally, uh, we have some great sessions coming up. Um, uh, this Friday, actually, we'll have uh, one of our Blackboard product experts, uh, Miriam Brady, uh, presenting on uh, using groups and creating groups in Blackboard to Learn. Uh, next Monday, we, we also have a, another great session from uh, a client and partner of ours, uh, Global Personalized Academics, uh, discussing uh, teaching online and, and uh, you know, best practices related to that. And then finally, uh, Monday, uh, November 2nd, uh, will be a late night with Lawrence. Uh, some of our, uh, one of, one of our uh, many star clients, uh, Lawrence Public Schools will be presenting on, you know, the top 10 ways that you can implement blended learning or improve your blended learning uh, practice in, in your school. So uh, a little bit about today's presentation. Uh, today we have with us uh, Janice Harding. Uh, she's an instructional technology consultant at Macomb ISD in Michigan. And uh, Jan's background is uh, she was an interactive learning consultant at the Department of Instructional Technology at Macomb ISD and a project member for the 21 Things Projects. Uh, she's also presented at ISTE, at MACUL, FETC, and, and various other local and regional conferences. Uh, she's been a project team leader for Macomb 2020 and uh, has 25 plus years of classroom teaching experience. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and hand it over to Janice, and uh, she can get us started today. Very good. Thank you so much, Riley. Are you able to hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you loud and clear. Great. 
Um, and um, I probably should have told you this beforehand, but um, it is Macomb, and that's just the way we pronounce the name of our county. But I can see a lot of people look at it and say Macomb, especially if they are from certain parts of the country. People uh, look at M-A-C-O-M-B, and they pronounce it differently. So um, we are Macomb County, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit about Macomb County with the audience in just a moment so you get a feel for our demographics and why we decided to start this particular project. So um, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to our session, Blend It with Blackboard, the Macomb 2020 model. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to share with you our success story about how we used our Blackboard 9.1 learning environment to support Macomb 2020. And if you're wondering what Macomb 2020 is, it refers to our county's two-year blended learning academy that was created here at Macomb Intermediate School District to support teachers in Macomb County interested in blending and supporting their classrooms with technology. So in the upcoming presentation, I'm going to give you some basic background information about our two-year academy, including what it is, why we developed it, how Blackboard was used to support Macomb 2020, and I also want to share with you the exciting results that we're seeing as a result of this partnership. Oops, looks like I went back. There we go. So, oh yeah, I'm sorry, he did it. we did have that slide up before. So just a, a few, uh, a brief introduction to myself um, so you understand my background in, in terms of my role in this project. I am a former classroom teacher, as Riley said, of, of a number of years. I taught in grades three through seven in one of our locals. And I've spent the last five years as an instructional technology consultant for the Macomb Intermediate School District. Um, and I will be sharing a little bit about MISD with you in the next slide. I'm passionate about motivating and engaging students using technology, and I work primarily with teachers to help them implement technology into their classrooms, and I do that through classes and webinars and staff development and training as part of my job with the other consultants that I'm privileged to work with here at Macomb ISD. So a little bit about Macomb County. Um, we are located, as you can see from the map, in southeastern Lower Michigan. Um, our county, the ISD, first of all, is an educational service center. So my role is as a consultant in the educational service center, and I work with any and all of the teachers or kids in our county um, as, an, as a consultant. Um, our ISD actually has two branches. One of that is that we service the special needs kids in our county, especially those, especially those with really high um, special needs. Uh, we have center programs for those. So that's sort of our special education arm. But our other um, arm as well, or our other uh, service area is the teachers and students in Macomb County. We provide services, including consultant services, and you'll see a little bit more about that in the presentation as I explain how we came together for this project. Uh, management technology provides services for the county, such as PowerSchool and Blackboard 9.1, so all the teachers in Macomb County are privileged to have access to Blackboard for their students, um, and I am the consultant that services them from the instructional technology side of things. I like to say I don't run the servers, um, but I do work with management technology to make sure that those servers are updated and running clean, as well as providing Blackboard instruction and help and assistance to teachers and administrators throughout the county. Um, a little bit about our county. Uh, we are 21 districts plus our Macomb ISD center programs, which really is like makes it like 22 districts. We have a diverse uh, socioeconomic perspective. Um, we have a number of districts that are free and reduced lunch districts, as well as districts that are one-to-one -one or thinking of going one-to-one. -one. So when you talk about doing any kind of a technology initiative with a population like ours, um, it's always very interesting because you're dealing with a lot of different um, types of situations in the locals in terms of the amount of technology and the kinds of technology to teachers and students. So I'll be talking a little bit about that as we go through 
participation as well. We are the home of the big three, and if you don't know what that means, we're talking Chrysler, GM, and Ford, so a lot of automotive influence in our county as well. Approximately 150,000 kids in our county and about 10,000 teachers that we provide services to here at the ISD. So I'm going to start off with this slide, um, and I know that anybody watching this presentation is probably looking at this and thinking, yep, we know that. Um, but this is a good starting place for talking about our initiative, Macomb 2020. And it says, who are today's learners? You know, they're, these kids are on 24-7 with technology. We know that. Anybody that has a, a child over the age of 10 certainly knows that as well. Um, these kids are digital natives. We know that they spend a lot of time throughout their day communicating and collaborating and creating using their technology. And we know that when kids come to school, they don't want to power down. They want to be able to continue those kinds of collaborative, creative uh, communication that they have in the rest of their lives. So this is just kind of a slide that shows the kinds of things that kids are doing online. They're reporting things to each other. They're sharing and sometimes oversharing. They're texting constantly. Um, they're collaborating, etc. So this is kind of a good starting point for us to be thinking about Macomb 2020. Um, and why we uh, undertook this initiative with Blackboard in order to provide this kind of a service to our teachers. So let's take a look. This, this quote gives you a perspective about working with today's learners. When students have uh, information available to them at their fingertips 24-7, it's no longer enough to be a sage on the stage imparting information to students when chances are if there's something they need to know, they can find it faster than their teachers. So why Macomb 2020, this two-year blended learning academy that I've been referring to? There's an increase in digital learning options across the state that, in, that for us indicates a need to develop high quality, engaging professional development for our teachers. Our state policy is moving towards digital learning requirements and online assessment, and I know that that is true in other states as well. Technologies provide teachers with amazing opportunities to access resources and learning materials. And we already have said that digital learning does boost student engagement and participation. These kids are completely comfortable with technology, so why are we fighting it in the classroom? We're also looking at um, readiness for career, college, and civic life. Students need proficiency in digital literacy, so that needs to be part of what they're receiving in the classroom, too, understanding how to use technology effectively and safely. We know that the, the physical space of the classroom is no longer the limitations for what kids can learn and do. They don't stop learning when they walk out the door and start learning when they walk back into the classroom. And we know that there's been a call for extending learning beyond these walls and the time constraints, this idea of any time, any pay, place, anywhere, and any pace learning, as the governor of our state has um, said to us. So this quote also helps uh, us think a little bit about um, using technology effectively. Uh, I know that anybody in the audience is probably aware that just handing kids and teachers devices or putting them in a one-to-one -one situation doesn't guarantee outcomes in terms of student achievement. Um, even Bill Gates recognizes this. He says in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, the teacher is the most important. Technology is just a tool. So a lot of talk has centered around in my world um, and here at the ISD about how do we support teachers to help make more effective use of educational technology. Uh, just using technology for technology's sake is not effective and just handing devices are not, uh, are not effective. So we're going to take a quick look at how are teachers using technology to support instruction. 
Well, we know that they're kind of all over the map because of the factors that are listed on this slide. Access to technology varies greatly, and I've already said to you that due to the variations in the 21 school districts that we service, we have classrooms and, and districts where the teachers might have a classroom computer and a projector, and that's it. And access to technology in terms of computer labs or computer carts is very limited, if available. And we have other districts that are one-to-one. -one. Uh, teacher comfort levels vary greatly, depending upon how long a teacher has been engaged with technology and how long they've been teaching. Um, some teachers are very tech savvy and others are very uncomfortable with using technology in the classroom. We know that there's a wide variety of platforms available. The teachers are putting materials out on, on websites and blogs and in learning management systems, and that sometimes that can create a sense of chaos in terms of uh, where are the materials for my child in my situation, and why are they different than the other than the, my other child, and, and having to do all those logins and logouts. Um, pedagogy and sound instructional practices definitely need consideration, and that's where we as consultants step in to say, what is the best way to use technology to support instruction? Some of our districts are moving to hybrid secondary classes. We actually have some districts where some of their high school students are on campus three days a week or some arrangement like that, and the other days they're off campus accessing materials online. So there's a, a big need, we see a, saw a big hole here in terms of what we were doing as far needing guidance and support to be able to move teachers into using technology to effectively support instruction and blend their classes. So that's where the idea came for Macomb 2020. Our leadership, um, which includes the people that you see on the screen, Mike DeVault, our superintendent, Mark Cummins, our chief information officer, and Dr. Judy Pritchett, our chief academic officer, um, sat down with a group of consultants back in 2013 and said, you know, we need to develop some kind of a program for teachers to help them become better blended learning instructors. Uh, and we want to do this the right way. We want to make sure that they're using pedagogy and technology in educationally sound ways. So they tasked a group of us with the, uh, the, the, the need to go out there and develop something that we could use with teachers in our county. The name Macomb 2020 was born because it implies, 2020 implies perfect vision, so it's sort of a visionary title, while giving a forward-thinking date to the project, thinking out a few years beyond where we are now. So the idea was that this new Macomb 2020 would help get teachers ready to help students get ready for their future. So a couple of things that make us a little unique. One is that we are getting support from all of our different departments coming together that impact instruction in our ISD, our Educational Service Center. So we have consultants from consultant services on this team. Um, we originally had one from each of the four content areas, math, science, social studies, language arts. We've had some uh, staff turnover, so right now we're looking to fill a couple of those spots, but we do have people from consultant services sitting on our team. We also have the instructional technology folks, and I'll be sharing with you who those are. I am one of them. Management technology is on board with us because they're helping us with things like Blackboard. And special education is also represented on this team. So these are the people from our team that are currently sitting on it. And you see my name on there, as well as Sue Harden, who's our assistive technology consultant. Dr. Jennifer Parker Moore, who is instructional technology with me. Sean McBrady, who is social studies consultant. And Christy Heinemann, who's a mathematics consultant. And as I said, we have a few other spots that we will be adding to our team as those uh, personnel shifts are made that I referred to. So exactly what is Macomb 2020? 
It is a two-year professional development program designed to prepare teachers in Macomb County to facilitate an online or blended learning environment in their classroom. Participants navigate a unique series of workshops and classes to provide them with the technology skills and the pedagogy essential to teaching their classes using a blended approach. In our county, we use Blackboard 9.1 to help us unify instruction and to provide training in an LMS that we consider, quite honestly, a Cadillac of LMSs. Um, we feel that while teachers are dabbling with other platforms like simple web creators and, and collaboration spaces, we see the need for teachers to offer them a high functionality product where they can do a lot of work under umbrella while giving students and parents a single space for instruction. So Blackboard really fit the bill for this. It was um, there wasn't any question about what platform are we going to encourage our teachers to use because we're already using Blackboard 9.1 in Macomb and we have been for years. So the goal was to combine Blackboard and our Macomb 2020 project to create successful blended classrooms. And this slide just reiterates for you that our goal was to prepare teachers to blend their classroom using Blackboard and that um, with the support of the various departments that I shared with you earlier, that we're able to pull those resources together to run Macomb 2020. So the purpose of Macomb 2020 is to get teachers who participate to understand the pedagogy of blended learning, to use Blackboard 9.1 to create a blended class. We're actually having them on their two-year learning journey, create blended classrooms in Blackboard 9.1, and use their blended classes to create an engaging learning environment that promotes success for all students. So that's kind of our mission statement. Our target audience the first year of this two-year project was secondary teacher. And that was simply to make life a little easier for us. We thought that we would start off with secondary teachers because it would be easy for the consultants who service these different um, areas of instruction, math, science, social studies, language arts, to be able to identify the teachers that they were going to work with and, and spend some time with. So we encouraged secondary teachers last year in all subject areas to apply to be part of the project. And really the only requirement was that they have a positive learning attitude and want to blend their classes using Blackboard. Now this year started cohort two, so we are running two cohorts simultaneously, one in its second year and one in its first year. And I'm pleased to say that we've included elementary teachers in this year's cohort. We have a small but dedicated group of elementary teachers and we hope to grow that audience in the next few years. And the outcome is kind of implied by the previous slide I sh slides I shared with you, that teachers will understand pedagogy of blended learning, choose an online platform, in this case Blackboard 9.1, and create a, an engaging learning environment for their kids. So the benefits to teachers are listed here. Um, beyond creating that engaging learning uh, classroom that we mentioned for student success, we also provide training. And in a few minutes in my slides, you'll see what kinds of training we're giving uh, teachers. Um, we're providing them with some equipment. We, they are getting headsets. They're getting text resources, including books like Engaging the Online Learner. Uh, they're getting online resources, and I'll share with you a big one that we use in addition to Blackboard 9.1. They're getting support sessions with us as part of their PD, where they have consultants working with them, helping them to blend their classes. And in addition, they also are getting some what we call sketches in our state, the professional development credits. And we have the option of taking, of uh, teachers have the option of using this for graduate credits from Central Michigan University. Our students, on the other hand, are getting those that the ones whose teachers are participating in the project are getting digital literacy skills. Teachers are able to offer challenge activities and, re, and remediation activities by using the online resources we provide them. 
There's um, some personalization and certainly engagement. We're encouraging our teachers to use adaptive release and um, also to provide student choice since that is an element of a blended classroom. Uh, students are being able to collaborate online and get that 21st century learning environment. So the uh, icon that you see there sort of has some of the different aspects of the program. I won't spend a lot of time on them right now because the upcoming slides will share some of that with you. But we're teaching, of course, the pedagogy of blended learning is critically important. Um, teaching teachers to be comfortable with the technology is very important, too. And we spend a lot of time giving them Blackboard instruction and working with them on using online resources that they can use in their blended classroom. Teaching them how to design course materials in Blackboard, teaching them how to evaluate um, their work and how to assess students using technology is another um, area that we cover. We talk about resources, the ethical use of technology, um, so you'll see some of that in the upcoming slides. So when we start off with our our Macomb 2020 participants, we usually talk about what is blended learning. And I realize that this presentation isn't necessarily about what is blended learning, but this does show you some of the things that we talk about when we get our, our cohort together. Um, we talk about synchronous and asynchronous learning. We talk about uh, the fact that student choices and, and flexibility and personalization make blended learning different than that just entirely face-to-face -face environment that a traditional classroom has. And these are some of the things that we talk about as we get together, uh, the benefits and drawbacks of traditional versus online education. And so that our teachers can pull from some of the best qualities of both environments by combining face-to-face -face instruction with options for student pacing, adaptive release, uh, flexibility and scheduling, etc. And the next couple of slides I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. They're just examples of infographics that we share with teachers to talk about where are you at in your blended journey. And the goal is not to move from face to face to completely online. This is just kind of a continuum for teachers to be able to see well, right now I'm face to face and I have an online presence, but gee, I could be doing some station rotation or lab rotation, or maybe I'd like to try flipped classes, or maybe I'm actually a teacher that's going to be doing virtual or hybrid classes. And this, uh, I realize that the text on this slide is probably pretty small, but it, it also illustrates some of the same concepts um, with the idea that teachers can be combining elements from some of the types of models of blending. I've already shared with you that we talk about the pedagogy and the models of blended learning and that we offer our uh, support for our participants by providing them with a lot of resources. What makes us a little different than the typical blended learning class that um, teachers might take from a university or might take from a um, another resource, is that we offer the ability for our, our participants to practice and implement and reflect on what they're doing. So we're using that learning cycle that we would expect teachers to use with students in the classroom. We're going to show you some things, you're going to try it out, then you're going to come back together and you're going to reflect on how you did and make adjustments as necessary. Another thing that makes us um, a little different is the fact that we have the consultants available to work with the participants. So they're getting the review of their lessons and their units that they're developing from the consultants that are there to help them, as well as offering some peer review and some peer sharing, both in the Blackboard class that they participate in, as well as when they come together in our face-to-face -face sessions. So in the first year, participants will complete a blended learning course through Blackboard. And by putting them in Blackboard right from the get-go, we're getting them comfortable with Blackboard. They're seeing how Blackboard can be used for instruction. And we hope that that's an inspiration for them when they come to, when they start building their own Blackboard classes. They then attend all face-to-face -face meetings and webinars. And I'll talk about the webinars in just a minute. Um, they have to develop their online 
students or face of their classroom using Blackboard 9.1. In other words, their blended classroom is in Blackboard. We also require that they develop and teach at least one online lesson. Um, and by online, I mean blended. That really should say blended. And that they attend the capstone night and present during the capstone night. And I'm going to be talking about the capstone night in upcoming slides, so I won't spend any time there right now. Okay, in year two, our participants, again, attend the face-to-face -face meetings, which there are about four or five a year, and any webinars that we hold. They continue to develop their online blended classroom, and we ask that they create and teach at least one unit, one blended unit of three to four or more lessons, and that they invite their colleagues in to review their lessons, and they also invite participants to the capstone night, which can include their colleagues, their administrators, their tech directors, and their tech coordinators. So this gives you a little bit about the curriculum. This is a very scaled down version, obviously. But again, in year one, they're going to learn, they're going to go through a Blackboard blended learning class that's going to teach them about the pedagogy of blended learning. And it's going to give them assignments where they start blending their classes. They get instruction in Blackboard. And this ability to sit with them and to work with them on Blackboard is critically important. We have a lot of teachers who come in being very hesitant about using Blackboard. And by the time they leave us after the first year, they're rocking and rolling with it and they're loving it. You'll see that from their comments. We also include technology integration. Um, we, we share with them a lot of resources for technology that they can include in their blended classroom. And they get that content area support from the consultants there. In year two, we continue with Blackboard instruction, continue with more integration and content area support, do a little more with data analysis and reflection and content development in year two. So our Macomb 2020 class allows our participants to experience a Blackboard class, as I mentioned earlier, but it also enables them to learn about the pedagogy of blended learning, and they get assignments. So for example, one of the assignments in the Blackboard class will be to create an online icebreaker in Blackboard that they have to put their students through and then come back and reflect on a discussion board in the class about how did it go. Um, they'll create an online assessment come back, try it with their students, and reflect on how did it go. So the purpose of the Blackboard class, in addition to giving them pedagogy and giving them the assignments, is a place for people in the cohort to collaborate and share and support each other as well. We do run webinars before we open up each section of the class, and the webinar will explain to the participants, this is what the section of the course is going to look like, here are the assignments that you're going to be completing, and the discussion boards that you're going to participate in, um, as well as sharing information about that they need to know to help them be successful in that section of the course. And I can show you if there's time after the um, presentation here. I can take you out and show you what the Blackboard class looks like, but I'm going to keep rolling for the sake of time right now. So what do what else do our teachers get out of it? I've mentioned a few things earlier. They get some headsets so that they can use those for the part of the class in year two them about about flipping their classroom. They get software like Snagit from TechSmith. We get the, give them resources like the 21 Things for Teachers, which I'll talk about briefly in a moment. They get some course materials. They get four to seven days of professional development. They have some after-school obligations as well throughout the year. We do provide them with substitute reimbursement, their districts, which really, really helps with getting their attendance here at the ISD. And currently, the cost to participants is zero because we are picking up the cost at the ISD. Um, I don't know that that's true every year. We're very grateful that it's true right now. And we will continue. Um, and if we have to adapt the class in order to make sure that it's fiscally we're able to continue it, we will do that because we feel that it's a very important project. 
One of the resources that we use in uh, teaching Macomb 2020 is our state project called 21 Things for Teachers. And I'm very happy to say that I'm one of the project managers for this. And it is a series of free professional development modules for teachers teaching them how to implement technology in the classroom. So for example, in the call out there that you see, one of the things is thing two, the face of your classroom, where it talks about options for posting your online materials. There are um, sections of the 21 Things for Teachers on communication and collaboration, where it will teach them things like how to use Google Docs versus OneDrive, or how to communicate online with your students, their search strategies, digital citizenship, be legal and be fair. Now, we can't put all of our uh, participants through all 21 modules, but we do use this as a support resource, and we do send our participants out to 21 Things for Teachers. And just a little plug for our project, by the way, 21 Things for Teachers is free resources for, tech, for teachers using technology in the classroom. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out at 21thingsforteachers.net. And what do we ask of our uh, districts? We ask them uh, to support these uh, tw Macomb 2020 participants with administrative support, with allowing them to leave the classroom on the days that they come to the ISD for face-to-face -face instruction. We also ask for technology support. Um, so that the principals and the technology directors and coordinators are aware of the fact that these folks are blending their classroom and can lend some assistance and possibly even some technology resources wherever possible. Uh, and we also ask them to support us by coming out on our capstone night, which is like our showcase of learning night that we do in May for the project. And I've already mentioned a few things about the budget considerations. We do provide substitute reimbursement. We do um, take care of the training costs here at the ISD and the equipment and the licensing and the books, et cetera. And uh, we're very fortunate that we're able to offer that right now to our participants. And this is just a little bit about running the project. I won't spend any time here, but one of the little tricks that we figured out this year is that we run both groups on the same day. It makes it easier for our consultants to be able to spread their time out among the participants and work with them on their lessons and their units. So that's a little, uh, like I said, a little trick that we figured out. Uh, we do have both cohorts coming here on the same days. So I'd like to spend a few minutes talking with you about the participants in Macomb 2020 and what they've gotten out of the project. And uh, I like this quote that any growth requires a temporary loss of security because I feel like these teachers, many of them, really put themselves out there by signing up for this project. They didn't know necessarily how much time it was going to take or how involved it was going to be, even though we tried to tell them. And for some of them, it was a little scary to get out there starting uh, blending their classrooms and using Blackboard and doing things. We're asking them to do things that they've maybe never done before or never done to the depth that we're asking them to do them. So I'd like to give them a little shout out. This is just a, a picture of the participants in our Macomb 2020 project. And they are an awesome and amazing group. And you're going to see a few things that we'll share with you about the results that they have obtained by being participants in the project for the first year of their two-year learning journey. And as I said before, we had our first capstone night last May, which was an opportunity for them to come together, create a presentation about what it is they've gotten out of the project so far, bring in their laptops, and share with the community at large what they've learned about blending their classrooms. So we invited all of our county superintendents, we invited our tech directors and tech coordinators, we sent the invitation out to principals, and we also asked our Macomb 2020 teachers to invite other teachers in their buildings that might be interested in the project. If you will go to macomb2020.net at the bottom of our webpage, and you'll see this at the end of the slide presentation, there is a slideshow from the Capstone Night. And here are some pictures 
to share with you some of the things that went on during Capstone Night. And I love to point out some of these because they are amazing. We have a participant up here who was explaining how she used the SAMR model to uh, increase the depth of knowledge that her students were getting as they used technology to support their instruction. We have two teachers in the middle who decided to co-teach their um, Macomb 2020 uh, to their social studies. So they did it as a team. They worked with all of their students in all of their classes in their middle school. We also have a teacher over here who was able to um, blend her classroom and she had students collaborating from different hours that she was teaching. They formed groups in Blackboard, etc. So a lot of really cool things that were happening as a result of this. Um, some of the success stories included that uh, people recorded more engagement from the student choices that were given, higher success rates on AP tests, um, cross-collaboration opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, um, engaging marginal learners. We had one uh, teacher who was working with EI students, and I see we have somebody being very friendly and drawing on the slide. That's very cute. Thank you for the shout out there. Um, we also have uh, more fluency with 21st century skills and more classroom opportunities for formative assessment. So these are some of the comments that teachers had. We actually surveyed them at the end to see. And I'm not going to read them all to you, but I'm going to highlight or point out just a few things. I love the first one. I was able to access the student voice of my non-participants in the traditional class. Think about those kids sitting in those classrooms that never, ever say anything. That, to me, made the whole effort for this project worthwhile when I saw that. Uh, Blackboard confidence has soared. Um, I have another teacher who said, uh, you know, she, she was using other things like Weebly and Edmodo, but I find uh, to be using Blackboard was a far better program to blend my classroom. Um, I was glad to use the formative assessment tools. I've tried things I never would have tried if it weren't for this class. I was forced out of my comfort zone. And the last one, parents have asked if I will be teaching their children next year because they want their child to continue to use the technology they have learned. That was a big compliment coming from them. I also had a teacher who said his success rate on the AP test for psychology was 20% higher this year as a result of participating in the program and blending his materials and giving students that opportunity to, to practice with those online materials. So I thought that was pretty powerful as well. So this is just another view of our participants at work here. You can see this is like a typical session that we would have going on when they come to the ISD. This is one of our labs. And I'd like to encourage you to visit our website. It is macomb2020.net. There are three tabs that you will see there, uh, including this Home tab, the About tab, and the Contact tab. Um, the Home tab kind of explains what the project is. The About tab has a, a video at the top where each of the participants gave testimonial about how Macomb 2020 impacted their classrooms. So make sure that you check out that video on the About tab because that is very powerful. And our contact information is also on the third tab at macomb2020.net. So I'll leave you with this slide and our contact information. Um, the on, our only true boundaries are our own imagination, says Steve Dembo of Discovery Education. Um, we're trying to use some inspiring quotes here for you to think about this project. But uh, if you're interested in more information, please visit macomb2020.net because that is our website with information. And if you have questions for me, and they aren't answered today. If you'd like more information, you can reach me at jharding at misd.net. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'd really like to thank the uh, Blackboard moderators and hosts for the opportunity to share our learning journey um, using Blackboard 9.1. And at this time, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to share information with you regarding our project. Thank you, folks.
Thank you, Janice. Uh, that was great. Uh, so yes, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat or uh, turn on your microphone and go ahead and ask them. Um, Janice, we did have one question uh, during your presentation. Uh, Tamara asked, are the graphics being shared available on the Make uh, Macomb 2020 site? That's a great question, um, and actually they aren't there. Uh, but I would be happy to share them with her if she wants to uh, email me at jharding at misd.net. They are in the presentation, but I know that the slides minimize the size of the graphics and might make them a little bit harder to read. So um, I, we created those. I'd be happy to share them as long as she's willing to give us the attribution she can use them any way she likes okay great thank you Tamara hopefully that answers your question for you um, any other questions for for Janice It looks like everybody's either um, really shy or I really covered a lot of bases <laughs> and um, and maybe they don't have any particular questions at this time but um, if they do if you think of anything after the presentation if you find yourself wondering well gee how did they do this or what about that um, again uh, I would be to answer any questions via email if anybody had anything they wanted to uh, that came to them later that they wanted to ask. Thank you, Tamara. I appreciate it. Thank you. And Saul, you're very well. All right. Well, we will do one last call for, for questions here. Um, but, but again, if you, if you think of something after we, we end, you're more than welcome to reach out to uh, Jenny or myself. Um, as well as uh, Janice. All right. Well, uh, Janice, uh, again, thank you for uh, for a great presentation today. Uh, I know we found it uh, to be very informative and uh, definitely uh, within the spirit of our Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, uh, sharing um, about your program today. Uh, and thank you to everybody that was able to join us online or, or who may be watching uh, the recording of this session. Um, again, if, if you do have any questions or just want to chat about something uh, that was covered in the presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, that's what we're there for. Uh, and you can see our, our contact information up on the screen. And uh, we will get uh, the recording of this session up on our YouTube channel as soon as we can. Uh, and we'll be sending out uh, follow-up information uh, with, with the links to, to that uh, recording. and. Uh, to the other uh, materials. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you.